Welcome to another episode of the Impossible Life Podcast. I'm your co-host, Nick Surface, and I'm looking across at a man so intentional, he schedules his bathroom breaks weeks in advance. That's right, friends. The former Navy <laughs> Sue. <laughs> Garrett Unklebach, a man who doesn't allow a lack of discipline, even from his bladder. That The second part of that statement really is true. <laughs> the other thing is... Like in my continuing quest to put truth into these things, which has sort of just happened, it's not really an intentional quest. Uh, that is true. Garrett is like a camel. Sometimes my body's like, You need to go to the bathroom right now. And I say to my body, Absolutely not. We will. <laughs> it's not time yet. Dude, I said, so, You know what's so funny? Like, and this, I didn't plan on sharing this. So I, I come up to and the way we prepare every podcast, I come up here first and I put together all our notes on the board that because which is like the summarization of a couple hour conversation we've had while we've been planning and we've done all our work at this point. So I put it on the, on the board so we know how the, our order. And I was up here with Noah, who helps us out at the Impossible Life, also, aka Council, aka Council. And I just started laughing out loud to myself. And he's like, what are you laughing at? And I was like, I just wrote Garrett's intro. And like, it just popped in my head. So I shared it with him and he started laughing. He's like, yeah, that's pretty funny. Little did I know that you're going to be like, yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's just like a, I'm just enjoying this whole process. Anyways, uh, we didn't come on here to talk about my intros today. We are talking about a subject. That I I'm, mean, never let, you know, a bodily impulse get in the way of an important mission. Sometimes I couldn't go to the bathroom and there's more important things to do than your body, you know, just having to urinate. I know, but like this is where I appreciate the fact that you've lived at like levels of extreme that most people haven't. So like some of the things that you just like, yeah, you can do well, that. It's one of, well, <laughs> it's people like, ask you statements like people ask me quite like, um, my wife knows I'm this way. Other people realize I'm this way. They're like, aren't you like, isn't your bladder going to explode? And I just look them dead in the face. Like, nope. <laughs> Have you ever seen a bladder before? Yeah. No, I haven't. It's really soft tissue. It can expand. All right. Well, I'm glad that, that knowledge allows you to ignore the deep impulse. Anyways, let's get on to the topic today, which is not bladder control. But man, maybe <laughs> maybe next week's episode will be. So, Somebody's been waiting for that episode. Yeah, that was not me, but you know, uh, I know a few people who could use it. Anyways, um, <laughs> I'm completely distracted. So today's episode, I can't believe we haven't talked about this before. We actually went back and looked, and we we have just not. It's not, never been the topic. It's never been the topic. It's been talked about a lot, but and this is something that I think you have a lot of depth on, which I'm some grateful as the and it was fun to get into this one today because this is one of those one I've, I've i've not spent a lot of time teaching this topic right. before so i had to re we had to really think through it so i enjoyed well, our prep today you do teach and talk about it but i don't think you had formulated you hadn't gone deep in your own mind to really challenge your thinking and this is what we do we most of the time and most of the time on this topic i'm trying to help people think about it correctly not right. so much develop a framework for them and i guess we should just tell people since we're talking around it it's priorities yeah. so the, the topic today is priorities um, which is, it's funny enough. So you may or may not know this I mean, about they would Garrett. know because it's in the title. So when they're, that's true. Yeah. Dang it. I'm thinking about this as we're <laughs> unfolding it, not as they're viewing it. Yeah. So you guys already knew that, but anyways, the topic's priorities and, uh, what, what's interesting. So Garrett's Garrett is going away that I have always seen that he's going to go in his life, which he's starting to get more notoriety as a public speaker. You're getting more requests and not from like, Hey, my men's group has a coffee uh, group out on the corner. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. But Garrett's getting like notable companies, like Fortune 50 companies and companies that aren't Fortune 100 but are still uh, of large size, inviting him in to come speak to their their people. And the number one thing that he gets requested, think about this: you have a Navy SEAL coming in to talk to your 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 people. They could talk about teams. He could tell a lot of cool stories. He could talk about you know mindset. What's the number one request you get, G? It's managing. I wouldn't say. It's not number one, maybe it's a, it's a top priority. People keep asking me like, hey, talk about priorities. Right. Which is OK. Well, you told me it's number one, man. You could have told me that before. I, I, know, I, I said I was deliberate in what I said. But that's OK. We can keep going. Anyways, that's Garrett's way of saying I'm wrong. And maybe he's right. Uh, maybe he's not, though. But the point <laughs> is, it's one of the most requested things he gets. And I, so I was like Googling this beforehand about priorities. And if you look on it, it is like because I was surprised when you said that to me. But when you look at priorities on Google, you have to go deep down the page, like almost to page two before you see anything that's not 100 percent business. Focused. And people like us and. I haven't even looked at what's on Google for our priorities, but I can take a swing and I'm pretty sure what you're going to see is like, well, number one priority should be your key tasks for the day. Yeah, and, that's, that's exactly what it is. Don't make email your number one priority. Right. And people want you, like they want people want a set of priorities. Like just tell me what to do. Yeah. Which is the really one of the things we demystify on this podcast podcast all the time is that's what people want is just tell me what to do. Right. And if you think correctly, this is, 
some of my personal experience going through the SEAL teams, they never just told me what to do. They taught me how to think, and then I would know what to do. Right. Because if you just tell someone what to do, that only works in a specific scenario. Yeah, very so good. far more important than us just tell you what your priorities are, especially for work. You know, when I talk about it to different groups and I help them learn how to establish priorities, I'm like, hey, you need to do this, then you need to do this. If I can help you think correctly, then you're going to set the right priorities. And And it's really so often where I've seen a lot of the failure, and we'll get into a lot of this, but where I've seen a lot of the failure around priorities is shifting priorities. That's, I mean, this happens in the military mm-hmm. too, where people can't maintain their priorities. That, and that's, you're just destroying what priorities are supposed to be. Yeah. They're supposed to be like established points of this is what we will do. So having shifting priorities, but more than that today, we're going to, we're going to get into some things I haven't really talked about before. And it's really how to know what your priorities are and then how to live by them. Yeah. Well, Hey, let's, let's dive in G. Uh, the, one of the first things is like that to know is that Priorities run parallel to values, mm-hmm. and similar to the values, everybody has them, which reminded me of a, like if I said to somebody listening, what are your priorities? I'm pretty sure everybody would list them. What's crazy to me is that I'm guessing most people's priorities that are listening to this podcast would probably be the same. It would be, you know, God, my family, my health, my friends, work. You might switch the place of one or two of those, but I would guess that everybody would list them the same. But if we then went and looked at people's lives, it would be a lot different as far as looking into what their priorities are based on their actions. Where values and priorities are similar is like one way of looking at values of a set of values for your life is that success is living your values. We've right. talked about that on this podcast before. Success is living your values with priorities. Priorities are the path to your purpose. And let me make like a, a parallel to the parallel here. One of the things in the military we always had in preparing for a mission was what was called the commander's intent. Yeah. I know you've heard me talk about yes. this before. right? It's, it's a clarifying statement of this is what we're here to do. Based upon that, we could set mission priorities. Sometimes the highest priority was no loss to life. Right. Sometimes that was not the highest priority, hmm. depending on what the commander's intent was how, and how important what the task we were going after was. Sometimes you know, t- with whatever the mission was, do as much as you can, but don't 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 overexpose yourselves to where you know seals could could die in right. this operation. Other times, the operation it's like this this is so important you must accomplish this. Right, and and that may include risk to life. Yeah, right. And so priorities change based upon what the mission is. And so what's really like so what I'm getting at with with the parallel between values and priorities, success is living your values. It comes from living your values. Priorities is the path to purpose. Mm, very good. And so your purpose, like per- see purpose is commander's intent. This is what's supposed to happen. And if I do these things, I'll get there. If I don't, I'm, I may think this is my purpose, but if I don't live my pri- by my priorities, I'm going to fail in accomplishing my purpose. Yeah. And you kind of, you gave the hint there and we're going to get more into this, but what that, what that says is that if you don't have a sense of purpose or a vision or a why, you're never going to be able to set priorities. And that was the point I was making about if we ask people, not just that listen to this podcast, but across the country, I would say, you know, there's maybe there's always going to be that 1% person that's like, yeah, I put work above family and I do that on purpose. But the vast majority are going to say families above work. But yet over and over again, when it comes down to priorities conflict, they'll choose work, which would to me would say, well, that's not actually your priorities aren't, you don't know what they are. And that was the point that we were making is like there's default and there's design. And then when you can take hold of them, in order to do that, you have to have a strong why. You have to have a vision for your life and have a purpose. And and understanding, you know, priorities is the path to purpose. That leads into, we always define things, you know, yeah. terms are so important. Yeah. And sometimes we give a definition or sometimes we, we use a Webster's 1828 or, or a biblical, you know, lex, uh, lexicon concordance definition for things. Other times we write a definition and the way that we're defining uh, priorities here is alignment with what you align, what you know to do with future decisions, mm-hmm. right? So again, priorities is the path to purpose. I know purpose is what I want. I want to fulfill my purpose. This is a true statement for anyone listening to this podcast. I want yeah. to fulfill my purpose. So aligning my, my priorities is saying, these are the things that are going to fulfill my purpose. And so this is what I must do in the future. Yeah. It, if you have this, you don't, everybody says they want discipline, right? But you want discipline with your priorities. Yeah. You don't want discipline. At, like if you know what your priorities are and you have things that are either a low priority or not a priority in your life, do you care very much about right. being super disciplined at those things? Right. No. 
right? So the, the definition for priorities is aligning what you know to do with future decisions, mm. right? So here's the decisions I know I want to make in the future. That's my priorities. Yeah, very, very good. Now, what was, uh, if, you, if vision, by the way, if vision and purpose are words that kind of just make your brain uh, just go blank because you don't really have it, very simply, you could just say, well, what do you want? Right. That's I mean, that at the very simple, it's like, well, hey, well, what do you want? Uh, but but going back to what you said about priorities and showing that they that they show your care. I mean, if you think about the time you've made a bad decision and, you know, I was, it's funny. My mind went to like 18 year old Nick and something stupid that I did. And what Garrett said when we were preparing for this, is you said it's like when you make bad decisions because you had no priorities. Well, yes. Or you you did not do what your priority said. Yeah. So many times a poor, a poor choice in life is I didn't do what I knew to do. Right. Yeah, and it, you make there's going to be mistakes in life that you make. I'm not saying this is everything. There will be mistakes you make in life where it's like, man, I wish I had known. Mm-hmm. That those happen. But so many of our poor choices in life, we caused them, and we didn't do what we knew was right. Yeah, it's not not following your priorities. Yeah, priorities is a foundation for discipline. Mm. Right, like I said, you don't want to be disciplined in things that aren't a priority. It's not like that's bad, but it's certainly not very beneficial to yeah, be disciplined in things that are not your priorities. So when you know what your priorities are, and one of the things we've talked about all the time is you don't have a, you know, we say it this way, you don't have a discipline problem, you have a purpose problem. Yeah, I love that. Right, when you know like what deeply what your purpose is, you need a lot less. And if you're in Mindset Mastery with us, you'll understand the way that we've broken down motivation and discipline. Uh, when you have a, a clear purpose in your life, you don't need near as much discipline. You still need discipline, but you need a lot less, right? Because that you have things, you have something that's pulling you forward. You know what it is that you really want, and priorities help get you. Like, okay, yeah. these are the things I know I need to be disciplined in, right? So you want to have priorities set before you. A lot of people are just like, man, I just got to drill down on discipline. It's great to be disciplined, but you want to be disciplined in the right things. Yeah, hundred percent. And I mean, you said as well, like, so we're talking about what, what priors will do for you. They'll also like, they'll determine your choices and your sacrifices, right? Cause it's, it's, you know, everybody likes to think about like, well, I prioritize this. So this is what I did. Well, you also sacrifice something. And if you're out of alignments, that example I gave earlier, you say that your family's a top priority above your career, but over and over again, you're sacrificing family. And I touched on it last week cause I hadn't heard you say it before, but you said it on uh, the, another podcast you went on is, and it's your quote to say, so I jump in here if you want, but I mean, you said you can sacrifice, you can you can, if you sacrifice your family, you, you can actually right, this is, this is help my, me out, Gian. This is my understanding of, <laughs> yeah. this is an example. I was talking about priorities. That's it, yeah. Right? Um, on Josh's podcast, he asked me about my, some of my priorities. And I said, my priorities, and we're going to get into this further, this is one of the understandings of priorities. Really, for me, priorities are the things that I don't want to fail at. Right. Right? I'm, I don't want to fail in my relationship with God. And after that, I don't want to fail in my family. I don't want to fail in my marriage. I don't want to fail in raising my children. I also don't want to fail in business, but I would rather fail in business than fail in my marriage. Yeah. And so that's why my my family and my marriage is a higher priority than business. I don't want to fail at anything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> that's that's no, a, that's sure. a logical feeling. But it's listening. It's like, well, I don't want to fail at anything. I don't either. Yeah. That's great. Right? But you have this is the understanding of priorities. And this is where people fail at priorities this is what like really part of the crux of priorities is understanding that you have to decide Mm. it is priorities will come down to a one or the other and don't think that this is just man's way of thinking this is god's way of thinking he says you must choose me first Mm. is what he said to peter peter do you love me at all yeah because right now you're back out on the boat fishing and that's not what i told you to do peter do you even love me at all that's the that's the end of john that's john 21 i think um when when uh Jesus is speaking yeah. with Peter, right? And this is an understanding that you have to prefer me most. This is real. That's what um, agape love is. Mm-hmm. It's a primary love. And so God requires us to have our priorities straight. And my priority is number one. My priority is with God, yeah. right? And he's saying, if you don't, and that, that this is a, uh, Luke chapter 14, if you don't hate your father and mother, if you don't hate your brother and sister, even your own life, you can't be my disciple. What's he saying? I have to be number one. Yeah. And so you have to be able to decide some things are more important than other things. Yeah. And if you, if that's uncomfortable for you, you're just going to get the, your life is going to be the weather. It's going to be good when it's good and it's going to be bad when it's bad and you won't know what to do. And your life will be the result of very poor decision-making. But when you have clear priorities, that's where you can weather storms and say, you know, it's going to hurt, but I know I'm going to come out the other end of this where I want to be. 
right? And where I want to be is I don't want to fail with God. I don't want to fail in my marriage. And so I'm going to weather this storm. It may cost me something, but it won't cost me the things that are most precious to me. And that's the power of priorities. Yeah. That's so good, G. And I know everybody sat out there going like, okay, great. Let's figure out how to set these correct. Well, good. We're not just going to talk about it. We're going to go through how to establish them, how to measure them, and then also how to live them out. Because there's some obvious things when you start living intentionally by priorities where there's going to be some conflict. There's going to be some you know, potential exception situations where you're like, well, what about here? We're going to go into that because we want this to truly be that you can come out of here, think about the priorities in your life, and go out and set your own. So let's start off first with establish. And uh, before we get, jump in there, we're going to go ahead and quote Pastor Keith Kraft, who said, members, we, we said that a prerequisite is you have to know what you want. Well, guess what? Point number one for establish is know what you want. And Pastor Keith always says, most people in life get more of what they don't want because they've never been clear about what it is they actually do want. So you want to establish priorities? Let's start there. Know what, what you want. Know what you want. It, it's a key coaching question, Yeah. right, with the people that I get the opportunity to coach. I start there with the things that we establish in business, right? With what Nick and I do in the impossible life. We talk about what there's, yeah. you know, hey, sure, it's a business. We'd like to make money. It's not the thing that we want most. Right. The thing that we want most, like what we are, are so determined to do is shift the mindset of what it means to be a godly man. Mm. We have we have quantitative and qualitative metrics on that. We know what we want most. And we can make decisions that are in alignment with yeah, that. Big time. Right? Just like that's the power of what priorities are. What's the most important thing to us? Most important thing is not to make money. Money will come from doing the right things. Money will come from adding value. But we know most what we want. You got to know what you want out of life. And you need to... Um, Gosh, I'm I'm thinking back to the the podcast we did recently on you know mentors and yeah. and heroes and teachers, right? Mentors are people that live in alignment with what you want, and I'm going to listen to these people and I'm going to follow these people, right? It would be not knowing what you want and trying to set priorities is the same as listening to heroes and teachers, mm. right? When you have mentors, it's like these people live the way that I want, they have right. the fruit that I want. I'm going to do that. Right. And when you know what you want, okay, I'm going to set my priorities in accordance with what I want. What type of relationship with God do I want to have? What type of marriage do I want to have? What type of business do I want to have? And this comes back to like a part of what you want. And this is the way, like, I, when I get into it with people, is it part of the uh, infant potential unlock, right? Yep. God has a plan for your life. That's purpose. You can have anything you want as long as you're willing to pay the price for it. That's potential. When you have purpose and potential, you're infinitely capable to go out and do what God has put you on the earth to do. With the potential portion, you could have anything you want that you're willing to pay the price for. You have to know what you want that you're willing to pay the yeah, price for. Because a lot of people, oh, I want this, I want this, I want a lot of things. What do you want that you're willing to pay the price for? Very good. Right? And this is, again, this is uh, Luke chapter 14 where Jesus says, uh, right after, he says, you know, if you don't hate your father and mother, right, you can't be my disciple. He also talks about commitment in the understanding that who sets out to do something right. without counting the cost. Yeah. You have to count the cost of what it is that you want. Priorities will help you understand the cost. Yeah. With priorities, you'll say, you know what? There will be times where I'll choose my highest priority and it will cost me something that I would like to have but it's lower on my priority list. Right. And this is where Garrett's uh, methodology for establishing your priorities is going to take a sharp turn uh, <laughs> and, and he's going to apply some of his unique brain to it because the logical place to be like, okay, I know what I want, so I'm going to prioritize what I want to be most successful at, right? That's what I'm going to put at the, at the That's top. That's what most people would do. Most people would take their, okay, my priorities. It's like, well, I want to grow my business. Yeah. I'm, I'm raising my hand for that one. I want to grow yeah, my business. Sure. It's not my number one priority, right? Because I don't create my priorities on the things that I want most. I create my priorities. This is, um, you know, Warren Buffett. Uh, what's the number one rule of money? I know a lot of you are probably screaming it back at me. What Warren Buffett says. Warren Buffett says the number one rule of money is don't lose money. Hmm. He didn't say the number one rule of money is make money. Right. He said the number one rule of money is don't lose money. Because if you lose money, if you blow up the game, you're out. The game's over. Right. In the SEAL teams, you know, one of the the top priorities is don't shoot your teammates. Right. That sounds stupid. It sounds just as silly as Warren Buffett saying, well, don't lose money. You have to know what is most important that will take you out of the game. Mm. Right. For me, failing in my marriage is one of those things. This takes me out of the game. Mm. I see it that way. And I've determined my priorities in that way. There is so much that is asked of SEALs on the battlefield and other special operations on the battlefield. But number one is don't shoot your teammates. Mm. 
And so you have, you set your priorities. This is the way I've talked about it before. You set your priorities in alignment with things you are least willing to fail at. Mm. I, like business is really important to me and I want to be very successful in business. It's not my number one priority. I want to go as far as I can go in business with the priorities and the alignment that I have them. Yeah. Number one for me is God. Mm -hmm. It's the number one thing in my life. And ahead of business in my life is my family and my children. That's what I'm most committed to. And in serving those things well, now I want to see how far I can get in business. But I'm never willing to sell out on either of those things to grow in business because that's the life that I want to have. Yeah. I want to get to the end of my life and have been found faithful with God. And I want to get to the end of my life and my life wasn't about me. I had a great marriage. I had great children. I raised them up into maturity and that empowers a legacy for the things that I've done, the way that God has raised me, the, sh the thinking he's given me that I can pass it on to other people and it'll continue. It'll perpetuate. And when I think long enough in my life, I think, man, a business isn't what's going to have great right. impact on the earth. It's a family. And so that's a higher priority to me. Yeah. And that's what we call it the fail filter. And so you said, it's like, well, what can't you fail, fail at? Now, something that you said when we were preparing that I want to share with people, because it's really interesting, is you said, I want to have a big, I mean, you've said on this podcast, you want to have lots of kids. And so as a result, you know, you've got to be able to support them. So you're working very intentionally and hard at business right now in some very specific businesses and giving time, effort and all your talents. Yeah, I want I want to be able to support them. And as my children get older, get into their teens, I want to have enough financial freedom in my life that I can spend a lot of time with them. Right now. OK, so that which is very good. Now, a lot of people, will especially if I want to have a lot of kids like my parents just had me and my sister. Right. Didn't cost as much time. E each kid that I have, I'm not thinking about paying for them. I'm also thinking about having enough time for them. And that gets harder and harder and harder right. when you when like Lindsay and I are thinking about having four or five kids. That's a lot of time versus two kids. Yeah. And so I'm thinking about business that way. I've got to create a lot of passive income and a lot of financial freedom. So when my kids get to a certain age, I really have the ability to pour into them. Yeah, exactly. So now, and we're going to get into more of that. But I want I want you to share that because lots of people will work very, very hard. Right. And And so you can have in, in essence, two people doing the exact same thing. There's other people who work, and like I've, I've talked about it before, there's sometimes I've, I've seen people that they've worked so hard all their life, they don't know how to do anything else, and their life literally becomes about their work. Now, from the outside, if they don't know you, you're doing the exact same thing right now. Man, Garrett's working a lot. He's building multiple businesses. So is this guy over here. How are you any different? Well, the why part is is really, really important, and we're going to get into that when we talk about measurement. So I just wanted to point that out because it, it, we're going to come back to it. So catch what Garrett said. What's crazy, and you didn't actually say this about the teams. I always ask Garrett questions about the SEAL teams because I think it's interesting. You said if you have what you guys call negligent discharge because you guys don't do accidental discharge in, in the SEAL teams. Yeah, if you, if you don't know what either of those are, they're really the same thing, uh, but what it's describing is the weapon went off. I fired a bullet, and I didn't mean to. And accidental discharge, uh, the Navy does not consider that a term. I don't know, maybe they've gotten soft on it. I know the SEAL teams haven't. Uh, but an accidental discharge is like, oh, sorry, the gun went off. Right. Negligent discharge implies I was not controlling myself. I pulled the trigger when I shouldn't have. Because that's the only way guns go off. You pull the trigger, right? Accidental discharge is like, I don't know, the gun did something. Right. Right. There's no such thing as an AD. But an ND, negligent discharge, I fired my rifle when I was not supposed to. And you get what happens to you, G, if you're in you, the SEAL It team. doesn't, you know, like, I mean, I heard it explained to me this way. It doesn't matter if you shot Osama bin Laden, right? You shoot one of your teammates, you're out of here. It's over for you. Negligent discharges in the teams, like, it is a egregious event. Because what it says is, you like, number one priority is that you can trust your teammates to be safe, mm. to not point their weapons at you, and to not be shooting bullets at the wrong thing. Yeah. Right? That's, like, the most <laughs> important thing. Yeah. And so if you can't be trusted with that, we can't trust you with so many other things. Yeah. I just, I think that's an interesting insight because when you talked about having the fail filter of going, okay, we're going to establish it. So the three steps to establish your, your priorities are number one, know what you want. Number two, it's the fail filter. What can't, what aren't you willing to again, fail again, at? Like, let me just push really hard on that. That's our, that's the SEAL team's culture. Right. There's a lot of other, other cultures around firearms where it's like, man, that's really bad. Right. And, and when you, the, the weight that you put on it, Right. This is this is kind of how honor works. The, mm. What you give to it, just like I give to my like my marriage is something I never want to fail at. Yeah. Like it would take away so much of who I want to be as a person. And they say that in the SEAL teams, if you do that, you you lose your trident. 
Right. This is how important this is to us. And but based upon priorities, right, this is how important it is. It'll determine what your future looks like and the types of choices that mm -hmm. you make. Right. And so for me, high, one of my highest priorities, don't fail in marriage. Don't fail with my family. And so I'm going to be really careful in the choices. I'll, I'll take risks in other areas. Right on the battlefield, you can expose yourself to gunfire. They don't say if you get shot, you're out of the SEAL teams. Right. They say if you fire your rifle incorrectly, you're out of here. And so it's the things that you know are important and the priority that you give to them. Mm, very good. So once again, number one, know what you want. Number two, put it through the fail filter. What can't you fail at? And then three, write it down. Like put it someplace where you know where you've, you've clearly put intentional thought. Yeah, that's the third piece is write them down. Because if, if they're just in your head, what accountability do you have? For them? sure. Right. And right. When you write them down, at least you have accountability with yourself. Write them down, share them with your family, share them with the, the, the close men in your circle or the close women in your circle. Hey, these are my priorities, right? Have some accountability to that. Yeah, exactly. So let's go on to two. So now we're talking about measuring. So you've established them. Now we got to measure them. This is where it gets really interesting. Measuring your priorities is a difficult thing to do. Yes. And this is this gets into some of like the, the deeper part of, of priorities measuring your priorities, it's not quantitative. Right. Right. Let me let me say it to you this way. Well, I was faithful in my marriage 364 days a year. <laughs> that's not faithful in your marriage. Yeah. Right. Well, hey, 364 out of 365, that's pretty good, right? No, it's not. That you have you have completely failed. And <laughs> we don't hear that sound effect very I, just, I know. I was just looking for it. It hit me, man. Sorry. So if you try to take things from a quant like that again, that's where the, the why the SEAL teams creates that culture, right? I don't care you know, what you do on the range, but it's not so like it's not so much that having an ND on the range is a big deal. But if you can't if you can't control yourself yeah. here, you won't be able to control yourself when it most matters. And sometimes like priorities are protections against failure. You're not you don't have opportunities to fail every second. Right? Like just think for and I, I don't know why I'm harping on this one, maybe it's for somebody, but just think about protecting your marriage. Mm -hmm. Right? Are you getting opportunities to fail in your marriage every single day? No. But by having priorities, it helps you for the one day a year right. that you get that wrong opportunity. Yeah. Right. And so that that's why you can't really look at priorities from such a quantitative basis. Well, I did it this many times. Right. These have to these have to be the most important things in your life. And when you've connected them to your purpose, when they come from what you want most in life, that's when you can say, no matter what, I'm guarding myself against these things. Yeah, because where people would be quantitative about this, and this is part of what sparked the thought process, is like if I say, and I would say this, that like God and my family are, are way above my career. If, if you were to go in and be like, all right, well, let's see how many hours you worked last week. And let's see how many hours you spent like in quality time with your family. I, I mean, unless we're on vacation, that's always going to be not in balance. And I would be sitting there trying to rectify, well, how do I, how do I say that I'm, I, my family is my priority when I'm spending all this time working? Well, I only, I only give 20% of my income to, to tithing right. and to giving. So Ex yeah, I guess exactly. God's not the number one. I mean, I spend the majority of my money on, you know, my family and right. family expenses. Yeah. So now you're looking at this going like, that's why we're saying it's not quantitative because you'd be sitting there going, well, I, I can't rectify that, right? That would be a very hard thing to rectify with your hours and your money. And what it really boils down to is, like we said, it's a, it's a heart issue. And that's where it's not quantitative. Mm -hmm. is it really is about the heart. And that goes to what I said earlier about you working hard with the understanding of your building margin in for future, Garrett, based on what you know you want with your kids. You can do the same actions for different reasons. Yes. And that that and you know you know who's going to know that? You and God. But where where I would tell you where where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, and that quantity, we can be doing the same things for, for different reasons. It shows up in really small ways. Mm. Based upon your priorities, you'll sacrifice different things. Right, very good. Right, like you can be like, hey, um, business is really important to me. I spend all of my time there. But there may be, it's like when it's going to, I, I will give a lot there, but the reason I'm able to pour a lot into business is because it's not costing me anything in my family. I've done, I've, I've given myself insurance by working really hard, protecting my family, having having time that I set aside, all of those things, which enables me to push hard in business. But if pushing forward in business ever cost me something in my so you ninety nine percent of the time you could look like me, just like ninety nine percent, you know, three hundred sixty four days out of the year, 
I was faithful in my marriage. Right. Right. Your priorities don't get tested every day, but where your priorities show up is the one time a year, the two times a year that you do get tested, where moving forward in business would cost me something in my mm. family. That's very good. And what we said is so what we uh, is in order to measure because we want to make sure we answer the question is that it, it, they're revealed over time is really how you you measure your and priorities. And so if you only get and the reason that it takes so long to reveal the fruit of your priorities it. is because you don't get tested very often. Right. Right. You, your priorities are only revealed. The fruit of your priorities is revealed when you get tested. And sometimes you get tested once a year. Sometimes these tests are a multi-year test that right. you're walking through. And so priorities really only uh, display themselves over a long period of time. Now, there's some things that it's like, hey, um, you say like, well, uh, I'm, I health used to not be and fitness used to not be a priority for me. I made it a priority. You can see some fruit in those for areas sure. over the, in a short amount of time. But some of the great things that come out of priorities uh, take a long time to reveal. Yeah, and, and what we said was for measuring is it's the fruit. It's do you have what you say you wanted? And so if you're prioritizing God and family and then you gr- your kids get to be 20, 25 years old and they don't want to be around you at all, I'm going to go ahead and say, like, you don't have the fruit in your life. So somewhere along the line, you missed it with your priorities. Because what's inherently a part of priorities is that you followed them. Right. And so that's faithfulness and faithfulness and consistency come with those priorities. And the fruit of those things, the fruit of faithfulness, the fruit of consistency is trust, yeah. is followability. Yeah, very Right. Good. And so what you're talking about is that, hey, over the long term, you keep doing the right things, you're going to develop some fruit that, you know, there's uh, just like in nature, there's some fruit that pops up in a season. And, but, you know, if you, if you want an apple or a pear or, or a peach, these things don't pop up in six months. These right. things don't pop up in six years. These trees take nearly decades to begin to grow and produce lots of fruit. Yeah, all of the trees are like that, right? Yeah, they have, they have a crazy. I think they're growth. the longest. Yeah, yeah, they take a long time. So what you said when we talked about this, because I was saying I was like, well, there's lots of people that would say that they had these priorities, and then they get like, you don't want to be the person that you you get to be your kid. Like, let's say you have a newborn kid, you don't want to find out that your priorities were out of line whenever that kid's 25. Because guess what? By that time, you have a lot of work to undo yes. the retro parenting. Yeah, this is super important. You've got to have as your walk, like, okay, so I'm, I'm a young man, right? And I've, I'm clear on what I want with my life, my purpose, where I want to take my life, and I've set my priorities. What you want to know is somewhere along the way, and again, this is where, go back and listen to the Mentors podcast because yeah, this is, very Mentors good. will help you with this. But having it, uh, you, you want to be able to have uh, spots along the way these check-ins, you want these known points where it's like, okay, I don't, I, this is what I want my children to be when they're 25 and 30 years old. But when they're seven, how do I know I'm going in the right direction? Yeah. You don't want to just march to this list and maybe you're disciplined in the list, but what if your list was wrong? Right. And so you want to have these abilities, these ways, and I'm not going to go into every single one because that would be a very exhaustive, but with your priorities, you want to have a way to measure them you know, not in six months, but maybe in multi, in a multi-year process because you're not changing your priorities all the time. Yeah. You shouldn't be reshifting your priorities every six months. If you are, you're not going to have any fruit. Right. But when you've had the same list of priorities for three years, for five years, you need to have spots where it's like, okay, am, am, is this taking me where I really want to go? Am I seeing the fruit of it? Yeah. I mean, so you, you, we use the kids example. It's easy to do that with finances or health, but marriage is another one because, I mean, you've talked about this. Your marriage should be growing and progressing. Your level of fun, your sexual connection with your wife, these things should be growing and developing and getting deeper and, and more fun and, and exploring. Like you, your relationship shouldn't just be like, cool, we're on autopilot now. Like, and you need to be taking mm-hmm. reflections and check-ins. And I'll say it, I've said it before on this podcast for other things. My life has drastically improved and increased in productivity since I did a couple things. Number one, I started doing the Ivy Lee Uncle Bach method, which I talk about, which is you know the morning five list of things based on how many hours I have to do. But my monthly check-ins now, where I look a month back and a, a month forward, it, that has been a game changer for me because I'm basically realigning myself to purpose. I call it my vision alignment session once a month. And I'm looking at all the areas of my life. It's not like just for one thing. I look at my marriage. I look at my relationship with my kids. And you know what? Have I missed it in months? Yeah. There's been months just this year where I was way out of whack. And guess what? I talked with my wife. I, I said, hey, I was out of line here. I did not I did not have the time that we need to be making for dates and all the different things that we said, but I, I corrected it quickly. I didn't go on and be like, oh, that was a bad year or that was a bad five years. That's the stuff that can actually do right. a lot of damage. 
Um, and one of the other things you said, G, about how to know that you're living according to your priorities, you said you should have an element of discomfort when you're living in line with your priorities because it's not easy. And there's gonna, and it's not, it's not like every day your priorities right. are uncomfortable, but there will be times when it's uncomfortable. And if you, if you have gone years and you don't feel like you had to make sacrificial choices to follow your priorities, you are, you are probably compromising on your priorities or you don't have any. Yeah, that's rough, man. Okay, so we talked about established for measure. Just uh, the, I want to repeat just for everybody. What we say is really you're going to be measured by your fruit, which is revealed over time because it's not quantitative and it's a heart issue. So what you need to be doing is having regular reflection and check-ins. Like Garrett said, if you know you want to have a great family, you should be a you should have a good idea. Hey, this is where we should be at when my kids are this age. This is where I should be at with my relationship with my wife as we go on. And you need to be looking at these things and paying attention. I mean, this is one of your favorite things to say. And I remember when we did the episode on awareness, I didn't realize how big. But you like to say all the time what you heard Pastor Keith say to Pastor Josh, which is it's an awareness it's issue. It's an awareness issue. But but so much of this is, and it's like I understand why you rate awareness so highly now because the more we go on, the more I'm like, man, it really is. So much of this is just being aware. So, I mean, think look, uh, just compare life to driving. Right. How many accidents are caused by just not paying attention? Yeah. How many people like get in accidents? Like, man, I was paying attention and I just read that sign incorrectly. Yeah. Very. I was I was paying it. I was doing the best I could. And, um, you know, just something happened and there was no way I could respond to it. Right. Those things do happen and they're, they're by far the minority. Yeah, big time. All right. Well, I, we said, so we said we're going to talk about establish, measure, and live. Let's get into live because there are some, we're not just kind of like, great, you got your hard, fast rules. These, you know, let's just go. There's some things that, that need to be considered to be skilled here. And, and one of them is that you said there's seasonality. Like there's Absolutely. seasons when priorities shift, right? I mean, we, your sister just had a baby. Are her, has her priorities shifted? Big time. Absolutely. When we were preparing to run a 100-mile race, right? It was yeah. a season. And both you and I had to give up family time yeah. to prepare for that. Did and we didn't like, like that. No. And, the, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I think that was the, 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 the primary source of our lamenting was like, <laughs> 100% it was. Like, man, this is, this is costing me more than I thought it was going to cost me. Yeah. But what we were able to do was have conversation with our wives mm -hmm. and say, look, this is just for a season. Right. right? We're going to get through this and then it, it won't be like this anymore. Rian says that she actually sell it because she was happier about me like completing the hundred mile than I was. I honestly was like, whatever. And she was like, I was like, why are you so happy about this? She's like, because I know you won't go do it again next year now. <laughs> She's like, because I don't want, I don't want you have to be gone that long. Yeah. And I, and I so that's a great example. Because we were doing these like you know six hour runs on Saturdays. And yeah. Stuff. And Sundays as well. We had to do back to backs. But the, but that's but that's a good point. I mean, so we knew, and it was for a set time. What gets out of control is you're like, oh, it's just a season, and then like five years goes by, and your season has now become your default setting, and you're not questioning it anymore. That's that's that can, the cautionary tale. To to understand seasonality, you have to have priorities, and right. you can say to your wife, say to your business partner, say to whichever, and say, look, this is our agreed upon priorities, and this is what we know serves us for a season, and to serve this reason, we're going to operate out of accordance with what our priorities are. Right. Right. This is the agreed upon reason where we're not going, like we're going to make decisions that are not necessarily in alignment with our priorities. And it's for this short term reason. Yeah, exactly. Now, but do, but they shift over time. G, do you, do you think priorities do shift over time? Uh, people are going to shift their priorities over time. I would say your top priorities should like the higher, the, the closer they are to the top, the less often they should shift. Right. Maybe your number four and number five get moved around. Maybe your number six gets moved around. Uh, hopefully your number one priority is not ever changing. Right. Hopefully your number two and three are changing very few times in your life. Yeah. Right. So the closer they are to the top, the less likely they are to change. And I suppose that with the seasons of life, I mean, I'm thinking about counsel who works for us. He's 24. You know, I mean, he doesn't have like a family at home, a wife and kid to provide for. Like I said, very few times in life. Right. But when, when counsel gets married, his number one is not going to change. Right. It's going to be God still. And his number two then. Yeah. And that's the point I'm making is like, so that's why I want to just clarify, like they can shift naturally with seasons, but it's not like you decide when you're 55, like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and crank uh, crank family down four notches. Like that's a bad decision. So <laughs> don't do that. Now here's something. So I feel like this is the the obvious one with priorities. Priorities conflict, right? Unfortunately, they do. We wish they never did, right? But unfortunately, they do. So I mean, what, I'm just looking for some wisdom here for everybody. Well, for first off, you if the, if you'll if you'll think ahead and be more intentional, you can prevent priorities conflicts, right? By a lack of awareness. A lot of people get into unintentional priority conflicts, yeah. right? Well, I thought this was good, and I thought this was good, and they both are good, but not when you put them on your priority list. They yeah. begin to compete with each other. And so, again, this is a, 
like like Jesus said in Luke chapter 14, count the cost. When you make decisions, you need to understand what how long am I signing up for this for? And is this going to compete with my current priorities? Because if you made that decision in a vacuum, sure, it sounded like a good idea. Right. But how how much did it cost you against your priorities? And that's where people are like, oh man, I was just I was just trying to help. I was trying to do a good thing. I was trying to just do that. And yeah, I, I put myself in a stupid position because I was not thinking ahead. Yeah, and and sometimes it's not even like a stupid position, like what you did was unattainable. I actually have a recent example of this. <laughs> uh, we were talking about this beforehand, and good old. Pop's Uncle Buck, Garrett's dad, has absolutely hammered me on something where I had said I was going to be somewhere. And you were actually talking to me about this downstairs and saying that I should have known. And when I thought about it, I was like, you know what? I, pr- I really could have seen it coming. But I recently said I was going to go do something with Mighty Men. And then some things happened in, f- in between the time that I said that and the time it was time to go that led me to, to change my mind on that. And if you know anything about Scott, if you ever wonder where Garrett gets his consistency and his standards from, it wasn't the SEAL teams. I think the SEAL teams just reinforced something that your dad had already <laughs> deeply laid into. Uh, and thankfully, Scott uh, is honoring enough in my life that he's going to bless me with the same blessing that he gave to you. So he hammered me. And and, it, and honestly, it was right. It was what I needed. So um, priorities conflict is not fun. But, if, but like what Garrett's saying is if you can look ahead and really be paying attention and have the awareness, you'll spot these things best, in advance. Sometimes you can't prevent them. Right. The best thing you can do is prevent priorities conflicts. The hardest time to, to solve a priorities conflict is when you're standing there on decision day, on payment day, yeah. and it's one or the other right, right now. Yeah. That's the hardest time to That's solve good. a priority conflict. The further in advance you can solve priority conflicts, the better. And sometimes you can't prevent them. And in the times that you can't prevent them, you're going to have to make a painful choice. Yeah, and, and that's really, really catch that because so much of what will, will happen, imagine that you're like, this is, this is a really obvious example, but I like to use the obvious ones because hopefully people can take the obvious ones and apply it to their life. If you know you're going to be having a baby or moving, moving like you're, you're selling your house and you're buying a new one, you're, going to move, you're moving your home or you're taking a new job, these are things that are going to require more of you. And if you go into those things and you don't know that in advance, and then you're starting to come to the place like what Garrett said, it's payment day, and you've got one or the other, that's 100% on you. And that's what we're talking about. This is why you have to look ahead and understand the things that are coming in your life. Are we perfect at it? No. But ideally, we grow in maturity and we get better and better at it so that when we see these pressures coming, it doesn't. we don't allow it to put us in a position. The better you get at understanding and uh, working your life priorities, it'll make you way better at uh, priorities and like small decisions. Right. Let me give you an example. Um, like when you go to buy a house, you're going to have like different um, different buyers have different sets of, and I'm not a real estate agent, but I, I do get into real estate a lot. And when you say you're going to buy a house, you're going to have different buyers have different sets of priorities. Right. Some, some people might look at a home and say, well, which one's going to be the least maintenance? Some people might look at home and say, which one's the closest to where I, li- where I work? Another person's going to look at a home and say, you know, does this serve all my family's needs? Another person's going to look at a home and say, which, one, which home has the greatest opportunity for appreciation? These are all valuable yeah. things in a home, and some people will value some more than the other. And when you can look at, when you learn how to live your life priorities right, it helps you when you come to these mm, other decisions realize which, what is... You can't, op- that's opportunity cost, yeah, right? It's the principle of opportunity good. cost. If you, you will decide one thing and it will cost you something else. Yeah. And so when you can get clear on this is what is most important to me, it helps make decision making easier. If you struggle with decisions, like if you're a slow decider, you're probably not very good at determining what your priorities are. Mm-hmm. Because when you, if you can determine what your priorities are and you're not just going to be a procrastinator and run from pain, you get those things figured out, you're going to be able to make decisions quickly. Yeah, I, if it's A or B, okay, A. I didn't. I don't really like A, but I like A more than B, and I know what I want. Mm, that's so good, G. All right, so the last thing, and and I just experienced this, is when you have failure, right, in in your priorities. So fortunately, in this one, it was just a few abusive texts for me and I, uh, a, a, an explanation, and we move on. But like on the big ones, you said if you're if you're faithful in your marriage, 364 out of 365 days, there's some failures of priorities that have much greater consequences and and that's this is the understanding and this is a painful understanding of life it's just it's like the seal team example yeah you know what if i had shot one of my teammates god would forgive me the seal teams wouldn't right right i wouldn't i wouldn't get i wouldn't have had the opportunity to go back and so there's a difference between forgiveness and restoration Mm. right there's things that you have to understand right like you if you accidentally if you get drunk and you kill someone in your car god will forgive you the loss the legal system won't right you're gonna go to jail 
and right. you're going to pay a price for some of the things that you've done. And so you have to understand that we live in a world of consequence. And so there's a difference between forgiveness and restoration. You will, if there's, and again, that's why the, the SEAL teams look at it the way. This is something we will, we never want to allow. Priorities are going to, are what's mm. going to protect you from that. Yeah. Do you, you can have goals, right? There's things that you really want in life, but if you fail at a goal, you know, what's great. You, you probably still made progress and you can pick up again and set another goal. When you fail at your priorities, this is very damaging to your life. Right. Right. It's very costly. I want to never fail at my priorities. And so understand the difference between priorities and goals. Understand the dif- difference between forgiveness and restoration. You can get forgiven for things. Right. But if I fail at my priorities, there's there may be things in my life that if I fail at that, I might not ever recover from. Yeah. And and think about that. You can maybe you you are the person that you cheated on a spouse or you cheated on somebody. They may forgive you, but you may not ever be able to be restored to being back in that marriage or back in that relationship. Or if you're a leader, unfortunately, we see leaders in in church settings and various uh, other situations where they've been abusive towards the people that they lead. You can be forgiven. And but you will not be restored to that position, and that's those are some unfortunate practical examples of what you're talking yeah, about. P- people who fail in church leadership positions, you need to be restored into a right relationship right. with God. You need to be restored into a body of church believers. That doesn't mean you need to be restored into a position of leadership. Right. Right. There's some things again. You like by making these choices by not following these very, very, very important priorities, you've shown yourself as not trustworthy and you've lost that opportunity for a lifetime. Yeah. That's not, no one wants to hear that. No right. one wants like, because, and, and this is, this is a wrong mindset we can have as believers. Like God will forgive me. God will forgive you. Yeah. But you may destroy something that will never be rebuilt in your lifetime. Yeah. And so, so again, good. this is the power of priorities. If you, if you'll get uh, real with yourself and have some sobriety on the understanding that these are the things that I can't fail at, that's what's going to give you the power of priorities to move you towards your purpose and not make some of the most costly mistakes.